Hey guys and welcome to my channel. In this video, I want to acknowledge the darker moments in recovery because I do spend a lot of time in this channel being positive, of course, and uplifting. But, you know, I want to keep it real on this channel as well because we have those days and times and moments where we are swallowed by the darkness of what we've gone through with that narcissist you know usually narcissists they find a way to abuse you in in every way possible and some of you have been abused in every way possible but what you usually come to discover is the rock bottom of the situation or the worst parts are after the breakup I mean, you've gone through what you've gone through with the narcissist, but healing from it can be even more devastating, actually. It could feel more devastating anyway, because it's always more than what meets the eyes. So as your eyes are opening and you're stepping out of that fog, you're starting to see things for what they were. I mean, when you were in it, you were kind of in a certain kind of an ignorance. But now that your eyes have been opened and you're actually seeing the magnitude and the level of, of disrespect and how dirty you were done, all the deceit and the betrayal, the lies and the games, and you're really seeing what you were and, the, and you're seeing that these were transactions, that the, the narcissist was just trying to play chess with you at that point and they want to stalemate you that's for sure have you backed right in the corner with nowhere to go you're going to feel violated and you're definitely going to feel betrayed I mean they rape your soul basically and there are instances where they rape you in other ways as well. Because they're raping your soul. They're raping your emotions. They're raping your finances. Your spirit. Your whole essence. They're just pissing on it. Like, that's a lot to swallow. <laughs> that is a lot to swallow. And that's why oftentimes in recovery, you'll feel like you're going further down that rabbit hole and you're getting further into that dark feeling. And it's hurting you more because you're realizing more of the situation. You're starting to see the whole picture. Because narcissistic abuse tends to be something that unravels, if you will because it's always more than what meets the eye. So I wanted to make this video to just acknowledge it for that person out there that, you know, maybe in the beginning process of the healing, of healing, or maybe they're far into the healing process and they're just having one of those days, one of those moments, because it happens. When you've been through a traumatic experience, you can have days, times, and moments far after the fact to where you're not feeling good. And you, you start getting a little consumed about what you went through. As far as you've gone in the healing process, this could potentially happen to you. And something could trigger you. Usually, when you have consequences that are continuing after the fact you know these triggers become more you become more susceptible to them prime example if you have children or a child with a narcissist and this narcissist was irresponsible and now you're carrying that that financial burden all by yourself and it's devastated your finances or you've had to make severe and, and just going afar and above and beyond just to break even or just to try to maintain and and stay afloat and take care of this child or children 
while the narcissist is, you know, just with their next victim, you know, doing what they do. So every day you're having reminders when you have to go work a double, when you go pick up a third job or when you make another sacrifice of something that you wanted, you know, so that you can keep taking care of the child by yourself. When you're in that type of setup, you're going to have days, times where you you feel depressed or you feel down about it because you're going to know, you're going to know, <laughs> connecting the dots, okay, why is this so hard on me? Oh, yeah, because I had a child with a narcissist that's not going to do shit and pull their weight. Oh, yeah, that's why it's so hard on me. And you, there's no end in sight to that unless something dramatically changes in your finances. Or you get a windfall into your life. Which is anything is possible, of course. But yet and still, and in the meantime, you're going to feel some kind of way about that. And that's just one example. You know, there have been people who didn't have children with a narcissist and they were still financially devastated. Maybe, you know, they helped the they overextended themselves to the narcissist and the narcissist stole from them. You know? I've heard all kind of situations or people going in and out of court because the narcissist raped their child, molested their child. Like, I've heard all types of dark things and God bless you and anyone else that has gone through that. That is a lot talk about a punch in the gut you had to digest the abuse that you suffered and now your child as well people are you know going through a lot from these narcissists so you're going to have those days and moments and it's not all going to be woe is me you might have some anger and rage because it's highly offensive and insulting of someone's intelligence It's not uncommon to have anger and rage. You might even envision killing this narcissist over and over. Some of you might get into those type of places and have to pray really hard to get get out of that space. Because you know that's not how you typically are. That's the enemy right there. Because the enemy is working through the narcissist. They want you to do something like that. So they can get two souls. Okay. They want you to do it. And then the spirit goes out of the narcissist into the next person. You know, they find another body. But I wanted to make this a video, guys, just to acknowledge it. Because I know, I know. You guys out there, you probably got some anger and aggression. Get you a punching bag. You know, I always suggest it to the women as well. When you have those feelings, you can just take it out. Let that aggression out of you somehow. You don't need to be punching holes in your, in your house or getting into fights with other people that don't have nothing to do with it. But, you know, sometimes we take things out on the people that's closest to us. Because we don't have an outlet. But get yourself, you know, sometimes counseling is, is needed. And you're like, look, I don't want to even talk about the key. I don't even want to think about it. And I understand that as well. You know, there's, there's a whole lot of phases to this. You know, sometimes we go through phases of being wanting to be isolated, not want to talk to no people, not want to fuck with people like that because you're just done. You tried it and, you know, that narcissist might not have been the first person that burnt you. And you're just done with people. But in all this stuff, I just want to say that tomorrow is another day. Tomorrow is another day. And sometimes we need to take that day and that moment and be to ourselves. 
And then, you know, tomorrow's another day. You wake up feeling better. But it's okay to take that time when you need it. You don't have to walk around with this plastic uh, ear-to-ear smile every day. We know that's not realistic. That's not real. Even people that haven't been through narcissistic abuse have their times and moments and days when they're not feeling up to nothing. You know? It happens. But don't be so hard on yourself. We're all still human. We are all still human. But I just wanted to make this video to just acknowledge some of the darker sides of recovery. You know, people get so dark, they might start questioning life. And it, and why should they be living? Do you know how many people attempt to commit suicide after narcissistic abuse and that are actually successful? Because they're raping people's souls. The humiliation and the violation and the disgust. You know, you just, you feel hopeless when you feel like you've lost so much. You feel you're grieving that. And some people get into that place. And if you're one of those people, just know you're not alone. But you don't have to stay there. And tomorrow is another day. What happens a lot of times when people have suicidal thoughts, they have what I would call tunnel vision. When you have a tunnel vision, you can't see around you. You can only, you're zoned in on what's bothering you. And it's magnified times a million. And it's all you can really see and feel. And it's hard when you have that severe tunnel vision to step outside of it. But our logic knows that there's more than just what we're zooming in on. But we're further away from our logic in that moment. We're in our emotions and we're feeling hopeless. That's why people take their life. They have no more hope. And they rationalize in their mind out of that hopelessness that not living is going to be better than living. They don't see the point of it. But that's just the dark energy trying to swallow you. And that's when you need someone to reach out to or you need that perspective change. So I hope that you are listening to this channel and that you're able to listen to some of my other videos. I just wanted to make this video that you don't feel crazy. You're in very good company. Okay? You're in very good company. But any type of low blow that is being swallowed by the darkness, you can come out of it. And we all have those days, times, and moments. And it's okay to feel it. It's okay to be gentle with yourself and just say, you know what? I just need a day. I need a day to sit in this and just feel my feelings. And tomorrow's another day. Tomorrow's another day. You know, I wrote a book called Silent Tears because I know about silent tears. Sometimes we cry in silent. And we're not sharing this much with people around us because it's private to us. The betrayal was so intimate to us. Because what's more intimate than a person's soul? <laughs> What's more intimate than that? Than coming and fucking with somebody's soul and their spirit. You can't get more intimate than that. That's the whole, the whole person's essence and being <laughs> right there. You can't. And then for that person to do that 
and be so, and you find out it was so impersonal. <laughs> they went to the most personal part of you on an impersonal level <laughs> at the end of the day. And that's baffling to us. But that's what happened. Because <laughs> that's the only way that they could get that supply the way they wanted it. They had to get all the way as deep as they could into the nucleus of you so that they would get the best results possible. You know, there is no regards for that. Oh, this is somebody's soul. Oh, this is someone's spirit. Oh, hmm. You know, it's like someone that, you know, wants something. Oh, there's some gold underneath this building. And right now there's, it's a school on top of it with all these children. But I I just want that gold. I'm willing to blow up that whole building to get to it. I don't care about all the children and the teachers inside of it. I want what I want. This is a narcissist. That one is a psychopath for sure. That's an extreme example, but people by any means necessary, by any means necessary, but I don't want to digress guys. I just wanted to make this video to acknowledge those dark moments and those dark times that, you know, they're going to come and we think rock bottom is, you know, when the narcissist discards us. But it tends to get worse before it gets better because you're going to feel worse after that discard in the days, weeks, and months following as everything begins to unravel and your your eyes are getting opened to what happened. Then you start thinking back to the situations and you're seeing them more clearly now in the way that you couldn't see it when it was actually transpiring. And you're just shaking your head because now it's just clear as day to you. It's like, why couldn't I see that before? And you're just shaking your head. And sometimes that's all you can do is shake your head out of disgust. But I don't want to keep, um, I'm going to keep going about this. But, you know, it happens, guys. You're not weird. You're not crazy. It's not something wrong with you. You're human. You're grieving. And you've been through much. I mean, if you're still functioning and taking care of children or running a household, still keeping your independence and you're processing all of this and keeping it moving, God bless you. God bless you. And he is. Pray. I highly recommend the prayer. Call out to God when you get into those spaces and places. Get your Bible out. Start reading it. You don't have to always run to other people. Run to God first. Run to God first. I used to run to people first. And I got smart. my tears and my situations they're never silent when I'm going to God that's how I deal with things now and then if he want to work through people I let him you know of course I'm not going to miss my blessings but tomorrow's another day guys tomorrow is always another day alright guys take care